And now that we have this relation, the, we can send the k factorial to the denominator, and that tells us what that number n choose k is going to be. So this formula, it's written here in red because you're going to see it a zillion times until the end of the semester. They are called the binomial coefficients. And they tell us the number of possible ways that we can create a k element subset, starting with a set that has n elements. It's always good to do a sanity check to formulas by considering extreme cases. So let's take the case where n is equal, where k is equal to n. Uh, what's the right answer in this case? How many n element subsets are there out of an element set? Well, your subset needs to include everyone. You don't have any choices. There's only one choice. It's the set itself. So the answer should be equal to 1. That's the number of n element subsets, starting with a set with n elements. Let's see if the formula gives us the right answer. We have n factorial divided by k, which is n in our case, n factorial, and then n minus k is 0 factorial. So if our formula is correct, we should have this equality. And what's the way to make that correct? Well, it depends what kind of meaning do we give to this symbol. How do we define 0 factorial? I guess in some ways it's arbitrary. We're going to define it in a way that makes this formula right. So the definition that we will be using is that whenever you have 0 factorial, it's going to stand for the number 1. So let's check that uh, this is also correct at the other extreme case. If we let k equal to 0, what does the formula give us? It gives us, again, n factorial divided by 0 factorial times n factorial. According to our convention, this, again, is equal to 1. So there is one subset of our set that we started with that has 0 elements. Which subset is it? It's the empty set. So the empty set is the single subset of the set that we started with that happens to have exactly zero elements. So the formula checks in this extreme case as well, so we're comfortable using it. Now, uh, these factorials and these coefficients are really messy algebraic objects. There's lots of beautiful identities that they satisfy which you can prove algebraically, sometimes by using induction and having cancellations happen all over the place, but it's really messy. Sometimes you can bypass those calculations by being clever and using your understanding of what these coefficients stand for. So here's a typical example. What is the sum of those binomial coefficients? I fix n and I sum over all possible k's. So if you're an algebra genius, you're going to take this expression here, plug, in, plug it in here, and then start doing algebra furiously. And half an hour later, you may get the right answer. But now let's try to be clever. What does this, what does this really do? What does that formula count? We're considering k element subsets. That's this number. And we're considering the number of k element subsets for different choices of k. The first term in this sum counts how many zero element subsets we have. The next term in this sum counts how many one element subsets we have. The next term counts how many two element subsets we have. So in the end, what have we counted? We've counted the total number of subsets. We've considered all possible cardinalities. We've added the cardinalities of how many. The, we've counted the number of subsets of size k. We've considered all possible sizes k. The overall count is going to be the total number of subsets. And we know what this is. A couple of slides ago, we discussed that this number is equal to 2 to the n. 
So nice, clean, and simple answer, uh, which is easy to get, easy to guess once you give an interpretation to the algebraic expression that you have in front of you.